Hello and welcome to RPG Tips again. I know that it's been a lot of time and I'm I've been extremely busy, I'm sorry for that, but I'm really happy to be back. On this video, as I promised on the last one, I'm going to show you how to play a module on your own while keeping the adventure and the mystery and the surprise. To do so, I'm going to be using the rules that I explained on my last video, so if you haven't watched it and actually read the documents that I link on that video, you should go back to that one, watch it, and then go back to this one. So as an example, I'm going to play Knight of Blood, a module from Warhammer Fantasy role-playing game. And I think it's actually from the end of the 80s. I think it was published in a White Dwarf magazine. And it's a very short one-shot module. So it's actually quite good to show how my rules work without having a three-hour video. The adventure is quite classical and follows the Warhammer style of everything is horrible and you're gonna die. I've divided it into three acts or chapters. In the first one, the adventurers are traversing a forest at night while it starts raining and then they are chased by a beastman hunting party. If they don't run away, there can be a battle, but the expected thing is for them to run away while suddenly, and this is where the second scene starts, a flash of light shows them an inn where they are supposed to spend the night. The inn is actually overrun by chaos mutants, uh, Tsinch cultists I think it is, where after a short interaction of the mutants, which actually are trying to pass as the patrons and innkeepers, the adventurers are poisoned and they are brought upstairs to a room. And when they wake up, they hear the noises of someone chanting and a ritual going on on the basement. And when they go down, they find that the patrons are actually invoking, well, they've killed the previous patrons and are actually invoking a demon out of a statue. So the adventurers kill the demon, well, hopefully, or you're killed by the demon. And that's the one shot. So as you can see, it's quite simple, fast, and easy to explain. So if you remember the mechanics that I showed on previous video on how to play a module, the first thing you have to do is to create your adventure script, which is basically a description of the things that make your adventure worth playing, the things you're interested in seeing in your adventure. And actually those are going to be the things that we are going to randomize to introduce a bit of surprise in our adventure. So I've created the script for Night of Blood, Again, you can find all of this on the GitHub. There's a link in the description. And the core ideas of this module are what? What do we have to do? Stop a demonic ritual. How? It's done through blood sacrifice. Where? On a shrine below the cellar of an inn. Why? To summon a demon. And when? Tonight. You don't have to worry that much. You don't have to worry that much about preparing a very detailed script. This is just a way actually of summarizing the important information, but later it's not going to be always used with the mechanics. But again, it's a very good way of understanding the adventure you're going to play. Then what we should do is create or detail our set pieces, the different scenes we are going to play or that at least the adventure has, because Mythic may throw some curveballs. And I've divided them into the three chapters that I talked about previously. The first one is the forest, in which first you ha we have a heavy rain and storm, then the sounds of a hunting party of beastmen, and a persecution and possible fight. Then I've named the second scene the arrival, with first the suspicious mutant, and then the dinner. And the third one, th the third and final chapter, is the ceremony, where you first wake up drugged, then the adventurers suffer a potential attack by one of the mutants, then they find the ritual, and they find the demon. I also compile a list of locations and NPCs and important objects, but that's not important right now. So let's get down to the adventure. Uh, first of all, some, some brief notes. I'm not going to detail exactly everything that happened, because first of all, I'm no voice actor and you will be bored to hell. Second, because if you want to actually see the narration, you have the document that you can read. By the way, if anyone is interested in, in listening to my voice narrating the adventures, please tell me. I mean, I'll do it. I just think that this video is more focused on showing you how to use Mythic to play your own modules. Uh, in the future, I may play my own adventures and I'll probably narrate them. But right now, I want to show you how I've done it. Additionally, I used Fate Core, well, actually a mixture of Fate Core and Legends of Angler for the actual RPG mechanics. I'm not going to be detailing them because, again, this video is on Mythic, not on how to play RPGs. Lastly, I'm going to be playing in not in the Warhammer world. I'll be adapting the module to the homebrew world of one of my campaigns, which is called Morvidia. I'll give you some glimpses, some details of the nations and the lore because they will be important for the decisions that I take using Mythic. But this is actually a good way of showing you how to adapt a module or take the ideas or mix them and match them with whatever you want. 
So to start, I will be using two PCs. The first one is going to be named Evard Horty. This sounds horrible. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be a German name, so it should be something like Evard Horty. I thought about them when I was playing and I play in Spanish. So for me, they were they are Evard Hortig. Uh, this is very strange. I'm just gonna call him Evard, who is a novice runic sculpture, which is just a fancy way of saying he's a mage. He is going to be protected by Corbinian Lindemann, a soldier which is built like a barrel who was Evard's mother gods in until her sudden disappearance. So one last warning before I get into the actual scenes. I used three different uh, mechanics for actually playing the module in three different scenes, because actually I was developing the rules while I was playing this. So for the first scene, I'm just going to play with base mythic, but I'll turn things in a very do-it-yourself way, without a lot of uh, rationale behind it. On the second scene, I'm going to start using the warp check, which if you remember is the main mechanic of my mechanics. And in the third scene, I'm going to be using the full-blown mechanics that I proposed, altering scenes, including new stuff, warping people, etc. Let's get right to it. The first scene is set up as while in the midst of a heavy storm in the forest, the party hears the approach of Beastmen hunting party. To change this, uh, just using base Mythic, what I asked was, is the scene setup altered in any way? Mythic Variations 2, Fate Check, and then I asked the Fate Check, using the Mythic Variations 2 rules, 50-50, and I got an exceptional no. So, so the scene starts exactly like the model proposes. Uh, you'll notice it, but I think I already mentioned this in a previous video. Playing as a module solo with Mythic, is an effort of combining two different story drivers. The module just wants to tell you its story, and Mythic wants to go freaking crazy. So the idea is to play the module because it's the story we want to play, but at the same time, let Mythic go a bit crazy sometimes so that it adds surprise to the module because, well, if you just want to play the module with no surprises, you don't need Mythic for that. So our party of two start walking in the forest at night. And the first curveball that I had to solve was, uh, there are no beastmen in my homebrew world, so I had to generate something equivalent. To do so, I used a description table of Mythic, and I generated the result threateningly lonely, which I interpreted as a huge snake-like creature with a circle of eyes around a maw full of teeth. Knowing this, the characters start running like hell, so the actual first scene turned into a chase scene, and in the whole adventure, I used Mythic to decide how Corbinian, Evart's protector and guardian, should act. Because normally when I play solo, I take the position of one of the players, normally the mage, because that's the class I like to play. And I generate the personalities of the other ones using some other generator. So in this case, Corvinian decides to run because he knows that the because he knows that the snake-like creature, which is called the Dombara, is coming for them. So once they start running, so once they started running. I also made a fate check to see if the Dombara had heard them, and it had. So it was chasing. The rest of the scene was played out with fate, which again I'm not going to get into specific mechanics, but fate is a very lightweight fiction first RPG which helped bringing out the narrative qualities of your game and having them actually affect the mechanics. The only thing I used Mythic for in the rest of the scene was when the mage used the telekinesis spell to levitate, to avoid tripping on roots, and I didn't know when the telekinesis spell was going to run out, so I made a fate check to see if it did run out or not, as a way of avoiding potential biases in which I cheated to say, oh yeah, my mage is going to stay levitating because then he won't die to the snake. The first scene was pretty similar to the actual module, but I just changed the beastman to a snake-like Dombara. Overall, it hasn't changed that much. Let's get to the second scene, the arrival, in which a flash of light shows us the inn in which our characters are going to spend the night. As I said, this was the first scene in which I used the warp check. So I chose a warp threshold of 6, which means that I prefer to randomize things than to keep them as the module says. Basically, this means that on average, I'll be warping 60% of the things in the adventure and keeping as the module presents 40%. Again, well, I, I didn't present the list of NPCs and threats that I have. The NPCs are the people of Valmaria, which is the country in which we are playing, the runic sculptures, the good mages, the donic protectors, the, the guardians of these mages, and the Dombara, the snake-like creature. And I had two threats, which are actually not related to the adventure. And this is one thing in which I think that my mechanics could be improved. One good way of making Mythic interact with the, your module is if you know 
the thread that the adventure wants you to play. You just include it as one of the threads in your list. And then when you generate a focus thread result, you will just throw a new clue that will make you follow the module. But anyway, the threads that I had were to cross the forest safely to reach the city of Valencia and investigate Evard's mother's disappearance. So the setup for this scene was that the party tries to enter the inn. First I made a warp check. My warp threshold was 6 and my roll was a 4. So that meant that the scene was interrupted. By what? I rolled an event check and it said NPC negative and focused on the Dombara. Then I got an event meaning result which was dispute magic. I interpreted this as that something happened related to magic that caused something bad for the Dombara. Specifically, what I did was bring up a high-ranking mage from the runic sculpture that I just created for this adventure, who killed the Dombara. To create him, I used the universal NPC emulator. This NPC was a conservative patriarch. That's why I decided he was going to be a high-ranking member of the runic sculptures. I decided he was going to be Potmal Keros. The high voivode of death magic, which, if you see the document, made the characters realize that then it made sense that the Dumbara was there. The whole narrative called got threaded together quite interestingly. Then I asked if Potmal was going to interact with them with a fate check. I obtained a random event and a yes. So not only he was going to interact with my PCs, there was also something else. So to generate the interaction between this NPC and my and my characters, what I did was use again the universal NPC emulator, and I generated a conversation focus, which was cautiously speak about skill, which I interpreted as High Voivod saying, oh, I knew that our sculpture was helping me distract the beast, thanks. And then I asked one very important question that was actually going to influence the whole story. Does he recommend that the characters stay for the night at the inn with a 50-50 probability? And I got an answer of exceptional yes. That's quite important, and it's a very good example of how Mythic makes the world of your module grow organically, and how from a small seed, such as the appearance of this NPC, we can push the narrative softly to go along the module while making it grow thanks to Mythic. Basically what happened here was that instead of having three scenes, the forest, the inn, the ceremony, now I had a fourth one, one which had been added, interrupted, between the forest and the inn which was the conversation with the High Voivode of Death. And as we are going to see later, that changed the whole adventure. So now, for my third scene, that was the inn. And here I also started using a more refined warp check. And the only thing that I fixed, the only thing that I decided not to change by default was the location because I like the inn and there's nothing interesting for me in changing the inn. I'm not interested in actually exploring the inn. I'm interested in the characters, the ceremony, how it's going to change. So I just fixed the inn and then decided that everything else was free game for Mythic. So in this scene, my list of NPCs has changed. I have the, still the people of Almaria, the runic sculptures and the donic protectors. But now I changed the Dombara for Potmalkeros, the High Voivod of Death. And my threats are still the same. Cross the forest safely and investigate the disappearance of Evard's mother. Now the scene setting was that Evard and Corinian try to get inside the inn. And in the adventure, the inn has sounds of activity inside, but when they knock, everything gets quiet. Then they are received by Otto, which is a fat, huge mutant, who is accompanied by Hans, a mutant which is also disguised as a road warden, and Fagor, Fager. I'm going to call him Fager, just in case, who's cleaning blood from previous patrons. Of course, he's doing it stealthily. So, the first thing to do is, is the scene warped, which is just the basic mechanics of Mythic adopted by the warp check. I rolled 1d10, and I got a 6. And as it's even and equal to the warp threshold, that means that the scene's alt. How? I rolled a detail check. To, and I got a focus PC result. I interpreted this as that the people inside are already waiting for the characters. How does this change their behavior? We are going to see it now. So first, Corbinian stepped forward and listened. And then I generated with a fate check if there were sounds inside or not. The answer was no. So he knocked three times, loudly. And the door opened on its own. And then I asked, how is the room inside? I know that is the bar area because I, did, I fixed the location but I needed a detailed check. And the result was fear. And rolling on the description table, I got 
interestingly fresh. So what's inside of our area is interestingly fresh and it's something that's going to cause fear into our characters. I decided that this was the side of fresh corpses of a group of Donic protectors, the same type of soldiers as Corbinian is. And then I generated the type of wounds using the description table in which I got mysteriously aromatic, which is actually quite convenient because demons are always associated with strange perfumes. I interpreted that it was sickly sweet smell in the area, lingering in the room, like caramel covering rotten flesh. Corbinian draws his sword, and then I made a fate check to see if the mutants were going to attack. I got a yes. So what I asked after that was, how did they prepare for the arrival? With a detailed check, I got Favors PC, and which PC? Corbinian. Now, Corbinian is a guy who's using a two-handed sword, extremely proficient at protecting the mage that he's guarding, in this case, Evert. So I interpreted this as having every mutant packed in one corner of the inn, which would make the task of protecting the mage much easier because Corbinian would just have to focus on one corner. So then a fight ensued. There were lots of shadow magic shenanigans by Evert and lots of cutting people and, and guts spilling from mutants thanks to Corvinian. I used the fate check, well I used mythic specifically to ask fate checks about about the behavior of the mutants, mainly if they were going to run away after seeing some of their partners killed. But there was one very interesting thing. When I asked will Otto, the fat guy, run away, I got the result random event and no. And the random event was close a threat. This is very interesting and again it's one example of how mixing mythic and our character's threats with a new module can give us some in very interesting results. Now, if you remember, I didn't include any of the module's threats into my list of threats. So I was going to have to mix them. To decide which one I was going to mix, I rolled randomly and the result was the disappearance of Ewart's mother. So that meant that Otto, the fat guy, knew something about the disappearance of the mother. So I decided that he was going to provoke Corvinian. I, I didn't say, but Ewart's mother was also a Ronic sculpture and was also the protégé of Corvinian some weeks ago. One important thing that I also added, but it's not important for the mechanics of Mythic, but for the enrichment of the story, is that Otto gave a potential location of the women in a city in another country. Again, an extremely organic mixture of a module with your own PC stories. I also used Mythic to ask if any of the mutants were going to do anything special apart from just hacking people with improvised weapons. Maybe as they were mutants they had something interesting, something, some random mutation, tentacles, acid spit, but Mythic decided that there was an exceptional no, so they were just normal people. Lastly, there were also two very interesting interactions with Mythic, in which I asked several times if Corbinian was going to execute the prisoners, and every time I got no's, no's and random events. Especially in the last one, I got an NPC action, and I got as a result of random rolling, the High Voivod of Death, Pot Malkeros. And then I asked the fate check to ask if this, was, this action was going to be positive for the PCs. It was no, of course not. And the action table was Imitate Misfortune. I interpreted this result as the High Voivod of Death barging into the inn, casting a spell of necrotic energy as a nova that killed some of the mutants and rendered our characters unconscious, and revealing himself as a villain. The end of this scene was even more twisted from module than the previous one was, which again is to be expected from the snowballing effect that Mythic is going to have. On the other side, it's very interesting. The story was unfolding differently. Now, instead of just a pack of mutants and singed cultists, we had a guy that was supposed to be a leader of the good guys, being part of the bad ones. Now, as I've said, it can be very easy to let Mythic completely derail your adventure. This is where you have to also be a GM even more than when you're normally using a GM emulator, and push or notch the story, the development of your story, towards the scenes in your module. In this case, because I didn't want to derail my module, I decided that still the PCs were going to be drugged and taken upstairs, and they would wake up for the ceremony, because, again, I wanted to play the module. This is going to be something that you're going to have to do continuously in order to keep that balance of the module and the surprises by Mythic. So for the last scene, the ceremony, this is the longest one, 
I used my full blow mechanic. So what the first thing I did was I took the script and if you remember uh, when I detailed my script I was talking about the ceremony scene. There were several plot points. The first one was wake up in the rooms. The second one was potentially be attacked by one of the mutants. Then find a basement in the cellar. And here I decided that its state depended on the time that had passed. So either the ceremony was starting the demon was in the middle of appearing, or it had already happened and he had killed everyone. Those were the three plot points set up by the module. Then once I got my list of plot points, I warped, I rolled a warp check for each of them. And the only interesting one was the second one, which was potentially be attacked by the mutant, which was completely warped, and I generated a new plot point randomly. The result was cryptic information from a known source. We will see later what that meant. Those were the mechanics for warping the scene. I know that it took a long time to explain them, but it, they are actually very, very simple. And then I updated my list of NPCs and threats. For the NPCs, I just added the ins mutants, and the threats were completely changed. The first one was, instead of traverse the forest, was escape this madness. The second one was, instead of find Eva's mother or investigate her disappearance, find the mother in Bardoba, which was the city. And I added a third one, which was investigate the high voivode of death's treason. This scene starts with them waking up inside a closed bedroom. I warped, I tried warping the location, it wasn't altered. And then I asked if they were drugged to stay asleep. I asked the fate check and it was a yes. So I used in my RPG mechanics a groggy condition. So first for the story, I wanted to drill down on the fact that they had just discovered that one very high ranking member of their order was actually an evil guy. So I asked, how does Corbinium feel about this? And I asked a detail check, and quite fittingly to the situation, I got sadness. So then they tried going out the room, and I asked if they had tried opening the door. And I got a random event, and yes. And luckily for me, in the random event focus, I got plot twist, which if you remember, I substitute the ambiguous event and remote event for plot twist or introduce a new clue or something like that. But my plot twist meant that something that had already been revealed was going to suffer a twist. I went with the Evard's mother's threat because I wanted to increase the stakes here. And what I decided was that instead of being a slave in a distant city, she was going to appear right here at the inn. One of the mutants was going to drag her screaming to the basement where the ceremony was going to happen. And Corbinian was going to see this. So once they, they get out of the room, in which there's a bit of an emotional conversation, which actually was quite good in a narrative sense, but I'm not going to focus on that. Once they got out of the room, they got, they got downstairs. And I asked, are the corpses of the mutants, the, the ones who were dead, still there? And, and I got an exceptional no and a random event focusing on closing a thread, escape from this madness. I really didn't know exactly how to interpret this. So what I said was that everything was squeaky clean and the door was just open, leading them to the forest if they wanted to go. But of course, they had just seen Evert's mother being dragged to the basement, so they were not going to go away. But I decided that this was a very good moment for activating the second plot point, which was cryptic information from a known source. I asked randomly who gives the information, and I went with Hans, one of the dead mutants, and to get what the information was about, I generated a result from the Game Master's Apprentice deck, which is a very good product that you should get, and I talked about it on my resources and tools video, and the result was Detect Bewildering Chaos. This meant that Hans' figure, a scrawny mutant, peered at the door, and he gave a cryptic prophecy, which actually makes sense in my world, and if anyone's interested, come by the Discord and I'll tell you what it means. But this plot point is meant to be a cryptic information, so it really doesn't add anything to the story right now. So my characters were now in silence after receiving cryptic information. So, acting as a GM, what I decided was that I needed to nudge them towards continuing the module. So I asked Mythic, is this ceremony audible from here? with a fate check. And I got a yes, which meant that they may still have some time to save someone. I was into, I was playing with the time mechanics and if the characters had taken too long to get to the ceremony, everyone would be dead. So once they found a basement below the cellar where the ceremony was going to happen, I asked a series of questions which determined completely the end of the adventure and they were gut-wrenching. The first one was, is the ritual finished? And here I took into account the time that they had taken outside to weigh the probabilities of the fate check. And the answer was yes. As the ritual was finished, I then asked, have they sacrificed the old patrons? And the answer was yes. And Evard's mother? And here I, I even weigh the probabilities to favor the no just in case because I wanted her to be alive. 
But the answer was yes. So then I asked, is Potmal here, the High Voivode of Death, the villain guy? Yes. Are the mutants here? Random event. Plot twist. And yes, are the mutants alive? No. And lastly, how hard is the battle going to be? For this, I used Iron Sworn and one of the generators it has for difficulty. And the result was something that could be won. It wasn't going to be impossible. But I had a very interesting thing with that plot twist there. And basically, this module had turned completely into the story of Evard and his mother. First, she was disappeared. Then she was a slave in another city. Then she was being brought to the cellar. Now, she was first sacrificed, which I interpreted as her body hanging over with her hair pointing to the floor, with her throat slit and blood flowing to a huge well. But then I got a plot twist. And what better plot twist than instead of having the mother being a victim of the ritual, having the mother be also evil. So Potmal, who was there, first defended himself from a shadow spell attack quite easily. He was launched from Evard in rage. And then, once he finished his spell, a rotten carcass covered in blood launched up from the well and covered the body of Evard's mother and fused with her to form a new villain that I really plan on using on my world, which was which I called Amotar, the twice unbound Queen of Serpents. So what was going to be a fight against a generic demon had now transformed into a battle against the mother of the protagonist possessed by a rotten corpse. Cool, 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 cool. Now I didn't have any clue about what this boss fight was going to be about, so I generated the boss capabilities using an action table roll, rolling on the action table of Mythic. And my results was heal messages. I assumed that this was going to be related to traumas and rekindling them, so mental attacks. The actual fight was extremely good thanks to fate. I'm not going to get into the actual mechanics of the battle, but what happened was that uh, Evard and Corvinian decided to, well, kill the monster and started working as a, actually as a couple of guardian and wizard. They, they cornered the monster who tried attacking them, but Corvinian deflected the attacks quite nicely. And then Everett pierced his mother's, well, this monster's heart with a shadow lance. And they were teleported away by Potmal, who said, Don't worry, my love. It's my fault for launching you against these two so early. Overall, it really didn't look like that much like Warhammer, but, but mainly because I ported it to my homebrew world. This could have perfectly been an Kistor or Road Warden in the Warhammer world possessed by a Sinch demon. But the important thing is that Mythic introduced novel things, introduced surprised, allowed me to play this module and it still feels like Night of Blood, but it also felt different. And the nice thing is that if you play it using these mechanics, it's going to be extremely different for you. Someone played it on the Discord and I think that her characters died on the in battle. Because again, depending on the system that you use to run it, it's going, the feel is going to be completely different. The main message I want to transmit is that these huge challenge, this, this impossible task that everyone has said like, oh, if you play solo, you cannot play modules. It's not true. You can do it. And the actual results are unique. Furthermore, the solo RPG experience is, by default and by definition, a lonely one in which not only you are playing on your own, but also the experiences you have cannot be shared with other people. Because if you use Mythic or any kind of Game Master Emulator, the story you're living is completely different from any other. But if we are using this mechanics and we are playing the same module, we can say, hey, in my module, um, Otto the fat guy was actually a good guy and he joined us. And in my game, I had the appearance of a high void of death who was actually the villain all along behind everything. So it can be a unifying experience for the solo RPG community. Anyway, I feel like I've been talking for hours. I'm really glad to be back. It's taken long, and I guess that I felt that once I finished the, the Mythic series, I had done everything that I wanted to, but now I feel the itch again, and it's good to be back. In fact, I've, I've been reading since yesterday my copy of Descent into Avernus, the last 5e campaign, and I'm really thinking about running it solo with my warp mechanics to see where I end up, because Baldur's Gate, I mean, I... I I grew up playing Baldur's Gate 2, and the more I read about the adventure, the more I like it. So if that is something that people would find interesting, if you would like to see me actually playing Baldur's Gate Descend into Avernus solo with the warp mechanics, please put it in the comments or share it in the Discord. I would love to do it. Uh, it's just that I don't know if people are interested in watching me narrate stuff. I'm not a voice actor. I don't have the charisma that some other people have. So I don't know if it would be interesting. 
as always if you have any comments questions requests you would like to you would like for me to talk about something i'm also thinking about making another video of resources because i've been reading a lot lately and I, i've gathered some interesting random tables and generators please say it i'll i won't have any problem in doing it but right now i'm really thinking about doing the descent into awareness game i'll never stop reading myself if you have any doubt please come by the discord or the subreddit we are nice people we don't bite and we'll be extremely happy to answer any question you have Whew. anyway I'm gonna stop speaking now. I feel like I've been speaking too fast in the whole video, but I wanted to transmit lots of things. I don't know if it was very clear. If if it wasn't, I repeat, you've got the whole document written as a sort of short narration on the GitHub. You'll find a link in the description. That may help you in understanding what I've been doing. But nevertheless, I'm always open to answer any of your questions. And well, I don't know. It just feels good to be back. As always, thank you for coming. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you've learned something and I hope you had fun and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.